You know Delmarva Life is all about community. That's your community too. So, is there something going on in your neighborhood? We'd love to hear about it. We'd love to see photos from the event. Why don't you send us the information uh, along with any pictures that you'd like to share with us? You can reach us at comments at delmarvalife.com or like us on Facebook and share the info there. Well, if you've been downsized from your job, you are unfortunately in good company. Over the past six years, one in five American workers has been laid off. And although as it stands now, the U.S. employment rate is below 5% for the first time in eight years, if you've lost your job, that probably doesn't really mean anything to you. Losing a job can cause a gut-wrenching reaction that can last weeks and even months. But experts say the sooner you can put a plan in place to recover, the easier it's going to be to survive and even thrive. Three years ago, a company buyout forced Cheryl Jones out of work after 12 years at a public accounting firm. She now found herself unemployed. I knew it was going to be coming and I thought I would be fine, but it does kind of affect your ego a little bit. Certified financial planner Newland Archinall has been there. This former news anchor started on her new career after losing her TV job. After people have been laid off from their jobs, it's like a death. Um, there tends to be a period where you don't want to do anything. And it's almost a period of denial. And I think they're missed opportunities. In order to survive and thrive after a layoff, Newland tells her clients to plan long before they ever walk out the door. Vacation time, number one. A lot of employers provide paid vacation. And if you walk away from that, you've just left money on the table. Ask your soon-to-be ex-employer for severance. Large companies often provide a three- to six-month continuation of your salary. But if you're being let go from a smaller firm or a privately owned company, the odds that you're going to be offered severance are pretty slim. But again, it never hurts to ask. Make sure your health benefits are continued. And finally, apply for unemployment immediately. Most people tend to wait. Cheryl Jones had enough savings to cover expenses for at least a year, which is how long it took her to find a new job that she was happy to accept. You just got to keep looking and, and keep talking to people and keep networking, and it's the best way to find something. Actions that kept her finances in tune during a rough time. Now, Newland says that she counsels her clients to never, ever touch their retirement savings to cover expenses during a layoff. She says not only do you pay regular income taxes on that money, mm -hmm. you also get hit with a 10% penalty for withdrawing early. Oh, wow. So you got to watch out for that. Insult to injury. Yeah. So let's say you are looking for work. Perhaps you should consider exploring space. Let me clarify, Jimmy, and don't get any big ideas. You see, NASA is looking for help as we chase a new dream of going to Mars. And as we hear from reporter Alice Barr, they're targeting a very particular group of people to lead the way. When you think of NASA, you've got to think progress. What if? Could you imagine if we could do this? Pushing to the next frontier. We have main engines start. And it's true for the people behind the machines as well. During the Apollo program of the 60s and 70s, men in white shirts and black ties ran the show. The images today are very, very different. Now, as we chase a new dream to go to Mars, women are leading the way in growing numbers. We have proven we're just as passionate about spaceflight, engineering, medicine, and extreme environments than any man out there. Over the past 23 years, the percentages of women working here at the Johnson Space Center haven't really changed. But what has changed is their roles. Back in 1993, 35% of women who worked here were in clerical roles, like secretaries. Today, that's just 3%. And back then, 34% of women were in science and engineering. Today, it's up to 57%. But the biggest change is at the top. 20 years ago, just 11% of supervisors here were women. Today, it's 32%. I think it's great. Women like Lori Hansen, the center's first female director of engineering. She says a diverse workforce just makes sense. We're trying to solve hard problems. And if we all think the same way, I, we're not going to make the same progress. There are many hard problems standing between us and a three-year mission to Mars. Very, very different requirements to keep humans alive. So is there anything you could suggest? That's where Dr. Fogarty comes in. As deputy chief scientist for the Human Research Program, she's focused on the person. What they call the pink squishy thing. Inside the spacecraft. Today's experiment finds a four-woman crew on day 22 of 30 living in this enclosed 
of space on a simulated mission to an asteroid and eventually to Mars. Uh, this is our airlock. Project manager Lisa Spence has been at the Johnson Space Center nearly 30 years. She watched public interest wane after the shuttle program ended. They thought we closed up shop. <laughs> But now with the surge in popular culture and the goal to land people on Mars in the 2030s. There's really a lot of momentum right now and I think everybody feels that. And a woman could be first to step on Mars. NASA's deep space astronaut class has four men, four women. Discovery Houston, you are go at throttle up. Pros breaking the atmospheric ceiling. Do you have a good day? While keeping grounded. You become the mom, not the chief scientist here. Small steps. Did you turn in your math homework? And giant leaps the next horizon. Fascinating stuff, isn't it? And you can follow NASA's journey to Mars. We have a link on our website, WBOC.com. Just click on our picture at the top of the page. Do you think I'm too old for that? No, I think you're perfect. I know there are times that my wife would like for me to go to Mars. <laughs> I don't know if it counts or not, but uh, Wallops Island Flight Facility right here on Delmarva is also doing a lot to get more women involved in space exploration. Wallops has something called the SISTER program for female middle school students. SISTER is an acronym for Summer Institute in Science, Engineering, and Research. Basically, it is a program designed to whet the girls' appetite so far, so far as getting some hands-on opportunity in these careers. Now, among the perks of the SISTER program, it provides hands-on science experiences for the girls and offers them mentors, which are made up of scientists, engineers, technicians, researchers, and mathematicians. And, of course, the program wouldn't be complete without a tour of the Wallops facilities. Hmm. That'd be fun. That would be. I wonder if I could convince them. I'd just wear long hair. I'd be good, right? <laughs> now, you don't have to be a professional engineer or astronaut or even a grown-up, for that matter, to reach for the stars. And a group of elementary school students are sh a shining example of that. Yeah, NASA says they are the first elementary school to successfully build and launch a satellite into space. Lift off. Their satellite launched on a rocket back in December and is now aboard the International Space Station. The tiny object is known as a CubeSat for its size and shape and is just big enough to hold a camera. If it works, it will beam back images of Earth every 30 seconds for up to a year. Now, if you're wondering how much it cost, $50,000, and the students and their school raised all the money themselves. Now, along with building that satellite, as you can imagine, they're quite proud of their accomplishment. We did it, and we accomplished something big. The students' satellite will be deployed sometime this month, but the exact date is still unknown. Now, if you want an idea of how small the school satellite is, it's about the size of this box of tissues. Really? Yeah. You don't need a, a big one for a camera. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That is fantastic. Well, it's always great to see students succeed. You know, one researcher is shedding light on what she says can be a contributing factor to kids excelling in the classroom. Let them play. We're going to hear why she's leading the charge and encouraging more schools to leave plenty of time for recess. Moving more is just one part of a healthy lifestyle. Diet plays a major role, too, and many of you can probably relate. It's a job in and itself trying to get kids to eat healthy. Well, not after today. Find out how to get the little ones to reach for their smarter snacks. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.